and and this was been um, practiced earlier during 1100 AD and it is still being part of our tradition and it has been followed by most of the most of our Assamese people. So what are the sources? That means what we have to just target while talking about these traditional knowledges. When I visited some of the farmers, they immediately did not tell that these are the practices we have been following. But we have to go deeper into their cultures. What are the practices they have been following? How much diverse is our tradition and knowledge? Hundred odd numbers of technologies were been recorded from rice cultivation only. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would, I would like to, to offer my thanks to the organizers uh, for giving me a chance to deliver my uh, or to share my thoughts to, with you. Topic of discussion will be how best the IT case could be utilized for the pace management. Basically, I have been working on, on collection validations and then dissemination of those technologies with respect to insect pace management, basically. Uh, uh, I have worked uh, in, in two or three different projects where I have collected so many different IT cases that has been prevalent among the farming communities across the state. So I'll be sharing some of the thoughts there and I'll be sharing uh, and, and also uh, I have validated some of the important uh, IT cases uh, at Assam Angles University and I'll be sharing uh, how we have been just carrying out those activities and how best we, we can just disseminate in future. Uh, regarding uh, pre my previous previous speaker, Madam, said that uh, we should promote uh, this uh, ZI registration and registration of uh, um, plant varieties. Actually, Assam Agriculture University has given some prioritization in terms of registrations of those indigenous your uh, means products or processes in terms of your like uh, this one ZI. And this has been uh, ZI Tech very recently in association with Assam Agriculture University only. And likewise, five or six numbers of your products has already been ZI Tech uh, with the association of Assam Agriculture University. And four or five numbers of your, your uh, farmers' varieties were been means, uh, registered under PPPFRA. So Assam Agriculture University has been taking care of in promoting, then protecting, and then validation of those uh, indigenous technical knowledges. So, uh, so these are already been known that uh, these ITKs were known with different names and it, it is not only the processes but also the, uh, the uh, know-hows and then cultural traditions or in, in terms of folklores and all. So all those includes the traditional list, which actually gives us so much of different knowledges which one can just take the advantage and in mitigating different problems. So these are some of the characteristics which is known to all. So I'll be skipping that one. But uh, here I want, uh, I have gone through some literatures where I have found that, you see, this hoi technology, this hoi or, or, or the cultivation practices uh, was first recorded during Neolithic period in Assam and in Bengal. So our, uh, these, these are the, uh, these were earlier thought to be the traditional practices, but later on, due to its use, so it, it has translated into some uh, modern technology or it is an essential part of our cult cultivation practices. So these are different, different, uh, different your time, timeline of improvement in traditional knowledge to our normal practices of cultivation. So these are also some of the myths uh, during the Vedic period or Catholic period. So use of these uh, irons were much more there in cultivation of the crops and these are uh, this this could be related with our traditional knowledges and later on these were being implied in our normal cultivation practices so this is a form of transformation of traditional knowledge into our normal cultivation practices here i want to emphasize that during the 11th ad only the storing of grains with a kind of your traditional structures, which has been plastered with mats and all. It is a customary to our Assamese tradition, actually. We used to keep the seeds in storage structures, which is plastered with mud and, mud and cow dung. And, and this was been 
um, practiced earlier during 1100 AD and it is still being part of our tradition and it has been followed by most of the most of our Assamese people. So these are some of the information which I want to say that these are the knowledges which has already been transferred to our normal cultivation practices as uh, documented some of the processes which are again been translated to our normal practices. So what are the sources? That means what we have to just target while talking about these traditional knowledges. We have to talk, uh, we have to go to the farming communities and whatever the information they have been, they have been assessing or they have been uh, taking care of those, all the information in terms of their rituals, then their songs, folklores, then practices or know-how. Some, some, in some of the cases, what happens when I visited some of the farmers, they immediately they do not tell that these are the practices we have been following. But we have to go deeper into their cultures. What are the practices they have been following? And likewise, we have to extract, uh, extract the uh, knowledges of the farming communities. And some of those uh, means practices were not been practiced. They have been translated from elders to the youngest, but without any practice in reality. So those, those information is also very much useful for, for, for uh, coming periods to generate some of the information. This food and nutrition always been a part of our culture and it is goes hand in hand. So recently, uh, Gulf of India has emphasized on the millet cultivation, but it was a cultivation of millet is a tradition in our Assamese society. And some of our tribes called missing, they used to cultivate these millets from time, long time ago, and they used to take it for preparation of different, your different, different local wines and all. It is a culture of the missing community to cultivate millet from time, time, time immemorial, and they have been utilizing for their benefit. And this is also a, a part of our tradition that we have diversity of, uh, we, have, we have huge diversity of our fauna and which are been reflected in our diet. These diets are very much rich in uh, our, our um, minerals and other micro and macronutrients and they have been you know, taking care of our health and all. And this is a part of our tradition and knowingly or unknowingly, we have been just assessing those knowledges. Then, this is the policy framework I have just formulated that what we have to do in case of crop rotation, I, I don't go uh, in details, but in case of your plant weeding genetics, some of the practices like conservation of land races, then selection against novelty, then natural gene bank. In, uh, this is a practice which has been followed in case of China. They have been creating some of the gene bank naturally at a farmer's point. So we can adopt some of the, those, your, uh, those policies for promoting conservation or conservation or promotion of the indigenous knowledge. But in case of crop protection, I am coming to that. So collection, validation of the local resources, then mapping and then time of uh, application or the effective utilization will be very much critical in terms of your application of traditional knowledge in, in, in base management in agriculture. So keeping in view, uh, we have Asamikos University have been just taking care of in collection and we have just collected so many different ITKs. So whatever the book uh, our DSR has been showing to you. So in majority of the cases we have published uh, through Assam uh, in Asian Agri History Journal those information whatever we have collected. Three or four papers I have just uh, published there and those will be included in our uh, book there. And about 100 odd numbers of your practices we have just collected from the farming communities of Assam across the state in terms of cereal production only. You see how much diverse is our traditional knowledge. 100 odd numbers of technologies were been recorded from rice cultivation only and 30 to 40 odd numbers these are some of the practices which are found to be these are some of the districts you see. This is uh, erection of Zarmadi bone. It is a customary to, 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 to the farming communities. Whenever they found the attack of insect, they usually go for some uh, local fauna and they used to put some branches of it. Then they say that this is a very effective, this is very much effective in controlling those, your, uh, your uh, insect paste. 
and and you see in most of the districts around 15 odd numbers of your districts we have recorded this kind of your technologies so this is shows how uh, how this is very much prevalent in assam and how people have been very much concerned about these technologies so these are some of the some of the other other technologies what we have recorded from the Syria. so these are some of the important aspects of indigenous traditional knowledge these are odd numbers so so lots of different uh, different technologies we have developed or knowledges we have developed but thing is that here important to note that over the time the peoples of assam has rectified those knowledges according to their need sometimes we have recorded that if they have applied some of the plant materials along with that they used to integrate some of the chemicals also as for example in case of management of your uh, soil borne insect based of particularly mole cricket of your wheat. There what they do, earlier they used to put some uh, ripened bananas into the soil so that the insect comes into it and then they used to kill it up. But later on what they have developed, they just put some malathion or some insecticide along with that material and they used to put it in the soil. And whenever this radiant or the other, other, uh, other insect comes into it and feed it, then they used to die. So they were very much, very much utilizing the old knowledges along with the modern technologies. Some of those, your informations we have also collected. This, these are some of the pictures what we have recorded during the, uh, during the time of survey. So these are some of the pictorial representation of those ITKs. So these are some of the information like uh, what are the uh, what are the uh, traditional knowledges that are being practiced in case of vegetable cultivation and mostly the people of Assam they used to put the wood ash. It may be wood ash or it may be straw ash means ashes into the vegetable cultivation. Mostly in case of brinzels they are saying that it is very much effective. But we have standardized it and then we have said that around 25 kg of wood as per bigha, that is uh, half a acre. Half, half a acre, uh, if we apply 25 kg in half a acre, then it will be great to control the soft, uh, sucking insect. Likewise, so many different technologies we have developed, and we have serially we have validating and we have been disseminating through our package of practices. There are about uh, 35 num odd numbers of your practices we have recorded from vegetable cultivations. These are all then. You see, this is how they, they used to spread. And uh, in many of the cases, we have seen that uh, they used to throw some uh, fish washes in, in citrus or in vegetables. And many a times it is said that this fish washes, sometimes it, it, it helps in putting some nutrients to the, uh, to the plant. Otherwise, in case of insects also, some of the predatory, predatory you see, this is a predatory ant, they used to come to that uh, fish washes or the small droplets or uh, pieces of fish, whatever comes with the fish uh, fish they used to come to pick that up and along with that, the insects, whatever present in that uh, crop, they used to kill or they used to trap it down. So likewise, this is also a good practice uh, which actually gives control to the insect pest in vegetables. Likewise, these are some of the other, other pictures what we have recorded. So we could able to record so much of different your uh, IT case pertaining to vegetables. Then these are some of the pictures about the stories of your uh, means stories uh, pertaining to the stories uh, problem. These are the uh, practices what they were been followed in case of animal husbandry. In Assam, Assam also, some of the people, they used to follow ethno-medicines to control different aspects of your uh, animal husbandry problems. Uh, when I was working as a subject matter specialist in, in KVK Chirag, I have encountered one special case. There, the pigari is a very much important sector among the Boro communities or tribal communities of Assam. They, every household they used to just rear pigs there. And they say that um, uh, there is a special, a special plant called um, it, Akongos. We, uh, I don't know the scientific name of it. But they used to take the bark of that plant and they, um, they, um, they used to make a paste and then they feed it to the pigs to control the worm. They say that I, I have visited 
10 to 20 numbers of your farmers, they say that it is 100% effective. But thing is that we have to standardize the dose. At what rate we have to administer? That means what quantities of the bark we have to mix it with the water and per dose of that, uh, they, they say that based on the age of the piglets, they used to feed them up. They know what is the dose, but, uh, but they, they didn't uh, uh, disclose those doses to me. Uh, so likewise, though there are some indigenous practices out there which are very much been applicable in today's context also. So th these are some of the uh, some of the facts what we have got during our validation program. So in one of the cases, we uh, we have seen that most of the people they used to hang some of the rotten things in the rice cultivation. They say that hanging of dead frogs, then pieces or kusias or some other uh, fruits and all, they used to say that. It traps the Gandiva. Then I have started to evaluate whether it is very much effective or not at our research stations, research farm. And I have found that whenever we install that dead feces or dead things in our rice crop at the milk stage, it didn't work. Nothing was trapped. So what might be the possible, uh, possible cause of that? So it might be because Everywhere rice is there, if we put a thing or a, a rotten things, it might not come because they have lots of rice to choose on. They have enough food to feed on. If I am I'm asked to take the rotten food, I won't go. That's because I have some other food to take on. If there is nothing in the field, then it might come up. So time of application of that particular indigenous knowledge will be very much crucial in this case. So uh, I'm trying to just find out at what stage of the crop we have to install it to just catch those areas. But farmers are saying that it is very much effective. So there might be some rationale or there might be some, uh, some information which is I'm missing out. So I'll be trying to do that. So I have installed that one. This is how I have installed and I have found that I have video on that. They are there in the field. They are very much prevalent on the field, but they haven't visited these traps. And I have personally recorded that after three days of installation, these fishes or frogs, they started emitting smell only after three days and it started or, or it lasts up to fifth day of installation or sixth day. Then after that, it completely dries up. So during only three days left to attract that, that one. So possibly I have missed that correlation at what point of time we have to install it and at what time we have to remove. It. So that has to be found out. This is the rationale or this is the scientific investigation what we have to do before recommending to the community. This is how I have installed and doses at different doses also I have just there is another so I have already told you that uh, people used to put some sticks of some medicinal plants in their rice crop to protect their crop from insect pests. There is a uh, there is a plant called Posotia what we Assam is called and in scientific name it is called as Vitex nigando and people used to put them up at a definite interval into the rice field whenever they, uh, they, they saw the appearance of insect based in their field. I have seen, I have also installed at different rates. These are the doses what I have just followed. And then I have found that this is very much effective in terms of management of case one and then whole maggot only, not others. As because during the time, when the times goes on, the, uh, the, the leaves which contains active uh, active molecules, they used to fall it on the soil and then it mixed with the soil and it gives the control. Mainly case worm, it leaves in the plant and whatever the uh, leaves the, it falls on and it mixed with the uh, water and then it kills the insect. That might be the possible rationale of having this kind of your effectiveness in the farmer's field. And I have standardized the dose here. Likewise, uh, there are some other other plant which is called as torapat. We, we in Assamese we call it a torapat. It is nothing but it is uh, scientifically called alpanzio or something like that. And I have found that this is not very much effective. All the farmers are saying that it is effective, but I have found that 
this is not at all effective as because it never dries up or the leaves never falls on the tree. It remains as such, it just dries up. But I have found out that it become a roosting site of predaceous bird. The birds usually used to sit there and whatever whatever lipidon paste will be there, they used to feed there. Just applied another ITK I have tested. It is the application of wood ash and soil mixture at one is to one ratio. And I, I, I found that it, this is very much effective against the soft-bodied insects like your uh, leaf hoppers or grass hoppers or some hoppers are there. So they used to stick on the body of the insect and they uh, throw, throw physical, uh, act as a physical poison and kills the insect. And uh, we have standardized those, those and possibly in the next possible time we can recommend to the we can recommend this technology to the farming community. This is how uh, we have been trying to just document, validate, and then popularizing those technology in Assam Agriculture University or Assam condition. So thank you very much for your kind patience. Thank you.